Now, during one-on-one -on -one consultations with people, I get to this point where I'm asking, why is it so difficult to get away from the narcissistic person and to get out of the toxic relationship? And the typical response I get is, well, there's still love there. I still love the person. And I go, ah, 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 ah. No, no, no. It isn't love. It isn't love. And the response is, well, Kevin, if it isn't love, why does it hurt so bad? Make me feel so sad inside. And if it isn't love, why does it feel this way? Why does she stay on my mind? Did, you see what happened there? I, I couldn't help it. It was just going in that direction. But song and dance never breaks out like that. But nonetheless, this is a real conversation that comes up. And I do have some answers and some solutions as to what it is that is keeping you bonded in the relationship. And I promise you, it isn't love. My name is Kevin, and this is The Royal We. Now, before I get into this message about it isn't love that's keeping you stuck in a toxic relationship with a narcissist, I want to let you know that I am here for your one-on-one -on -one support. And I promise you, I will not bust out in a song and dance for you unless you want me to. But chances are, it's not going to happen. But down below in the description box, you'll find access to my calendar where you can schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with me. Now then, let's get into well, what, it, what it is. It's not love. What is it that's keeping you stuck in a toxic relationship? What is it that keeps you hanging on to an abusive personality? And it isn't love. Now, there's all kinds of weird ideas about what love is. There's the movie called The Devil's Advocate where the devil in the movie himself said that love is biochemically no different than eating large amounts of chocolate. And... While that's kind of a far-fetched idea, there's still some hint of truth in that, in that what we feel oftentimes has more to do with our biochemistry than actually really loving another individual. We need to understand that because our biochemistry plays a huge role in why we get stuck in toxic relationships with narcissistically abusive people, with any kind of abusive personality type. It has a lot to do with our biochemistry. So let's get into it. If it isn't love, and this message isn't about what love is, I'm just here to talk right now about what isn't love. And what isn't love is what you're feeling towards a toxic person, towards an abusive person. You might mistake it as love, but it isn't love. So let's get into what it is without any further delay. Well, there's a couple of thoughts here. You see, what started out as your interest in love, you being led down a path of love, you being given a promise of love, which we typically refer to as the love bombing phase of an abusive personality. They will throw all kinds of promises your way, leading you down a path to where you believe love will exist because we all want to find love, right? We're on the search for this thing called love. I want to know what love is. I know you can show me, All right? That's kind of how we live our lives. And narcissistic people, abusive personalities, even the Bible says, be careful of those who come at you flattering you because they're throwing a net under your feet to catch you. But these people come along and they absolutely catch us, catch us right off guard. And so you're hanging on to the hope that it's going to take you to the path of love. Okay, and you never get there. But on your way to discovering love, you do a lot of things in hopes of getting love. You give your body, you give your money, you give your whatever, attention, your focus, you give up your single status, you do all of these things because you're on the path to finding love. What happens? The mask slips on the narcissist. You are demeaned and devalued. You're let down in some particular way that just jabs you, boom, punches you in the stomach. You didn't expect it. And it came at a time after you've already invested some things on your path to finding love. I want to tell you right now that that moment is the moment you actually stopped loving them. I'm going to say this again. 
that first jab, that moment you were jabbed in the stomach by a narcissistic person, you were demeaned, you were devalued, you were fooled, you were lied to, you were suckered. And I want you to get this, this memory. I want you to get it in your mind right now, that moment. Maybe it was a time when uh, a narcissistic person told you that they were claiming to be exclusive with you, but then you saw that they are still single on their social media, or you found out they still have a uh, an account on some dating site. Maybe it was the moment that they yelled at you, cussed you out, called you names. It was the first time in that moment, get it in your mind, that's the moment you stopped loving them. That's the truth. You stopped loving them. You stopped liking them even. I'll go that far with you. You're going to say, well, then what the heck have I been doing trying to talk with them? It has nothing to do with love or even liking them anymore because you don't. What's there to love about somebody who's lying to you, somebody who is uh, cussing at you, calling your names? What's to even like about a person like that? Would you meet some random stranger on a street and like them for doing that to you? No. We naturally stop liking them. But at this point in the relationship, because of what we invested into it, something else takes over. A very strong bond that's stronger than liking somebody and stronger than loving somebody because this feeling, this emotion that takes over is our core self. Okay? Follow me on this. What takes over is our desire to not believe what's really unfolding before our eyes. I'm going to say it again. We develop a strong desire to not believe what's unfolding before our eyes. What's unfolding? A person who just used us, took advantage of us, lied to us, lured us in, manipulated us, and all the stuff that we know is possible in humanity, but we never thought it could really happen and we would really see it, and it finally did. And it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it. No, no, no. There's no way this person's lying to me. No, no, no. No, 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 no. It, this can't be. Oh, it is. And like I said, this isn't new. This evil, if you will, has plagued humanity since the dawn of time, since Cain killed his own brother Abel. But we look at this and go, no, no, no. It can't be true. No, I, I don't. No, no, no. And so, as a result, the desire is then to prove yourself wrong. And this is what you're mistaking for love and liking the person. What you're really feeling is, no, i got to prove myself wrong. This, this can't be right. This isn't an evil person. This isn't a manipulator. This isn't, no, 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 this person's good. I'm, I, I want to believe that hope that I had. I don't want to believe I was just shysted by a shyster. I don't want to believe I just bought snake oil from a shady salesman. Oh, it's worse than that. You more than bought stuff. You gave your body to stuff. You gave your money to, you invested deeply into a salesman that sold you snake oil. That's hard to believe. So that's one reason that you're hanging on because you want to prove yourself wrong. You know, deep down it's evil. You know, deep down you're messing with something you shouldn't be with, but you want to prove that wrong because it's too hard to accept that you've allowed that to take place. That's one. Number two, the second reason is that, well, now you have got to change your whole concept and idea. Again, your narrative of the world has just collapsed now that this has happened to you. And you don't want that to happen because what does that mean? That means you got to rebuild your life. You got to rebuild your ideas of relationships. You got to rebuild your idea of family dynamics. You got to rebuild all this stuff because the way you once looked at it failed you. It crumbled, it broke, and you don't want that either. So there's another reason you're grabbing onto this relationship because it represents how you once saw the world. No, don't, no, please don't be evil. No, 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 because I don't want to change the way I see the world. No. That's why. So there's a couple of good ideas that I'm giving you as to why the bond is so strong because it has everything to do with you. At some point, you got to let go. Let go. Even if that means you collapse into nothingness and you start over, you got to build yourself back up. Build yourself back up. 
accept the new way you're going to see the world. Evil is everywhere. Dudes are out there to take advantage of you. Women are out there to take advantage of you. Accept it. By accepting it, you'll learn the red flags. You'll learn what to look for. You'll learn how to value yourself differently in this crazy evil world full of narcissists and abusive people who want to use you and abuse you and take advantage of you. And that's the goal. So let it go. It isn't love. You don't even like them. You just want to hang on to yourself. Listen, I want to be a part of your healing journey. And as I said before, I won't sing to you, I promise. But down in the description box, you'll find access to my calendar where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me. Telephone calls, FaceTime, WhatsApp video calls, text message consultations. It's all up to you. And it's all down in the description box. So head on down there and schedule some time with me. I look forward to talking with you. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on The Royal Week.